Hi everyone. So it's me, Mariska, and how are you guys today? I hope you are all very well because we haven't seen in a long time. And today I'm going to present you about the chapter one and also chapter two of my assessments, and I hope you all enjoy it. So the chapter one, one point one background of the study. As we know. That in Indonesia we have the very good natural resources, the natural destinations from Sabang until Merauke, and tourism is one of the great source of income for Indonesia. Over the past six decades, tourism has experienced expansions and also diversifications, which impact in the increasing numbers of the tourist arrival. In Bali, in the place where I live now. And in a place where I grew up, it continuously improved the amount of the quality tourism services and also the supporting facilities, which result in increased numbers of the hotels and also the hotels room in Bali. And in here, it's the tables of the growth of the number of star and non-star hotel in Bali from 1981 until 2014. And then, in the beginning, in 1981, the total numbers of hotel in Bali was 422. And then, last time, in 2014, the number of the hotel has increased into 1,427. And then, this data is from the website of Central Bureau of Bali Statistics and also the Bali Tourism Office. In the modern hotel business, hotels branding can be a nationals, can also international characters, and then the strategy for the internationals hotel brandings are placing a choice of the good hotel locations in the foreign countries. They also have the large number of the hotel expansions and exclusively the large hotel change numbers through the constructions of the high class hotel. And the growth of international hotel chains in Bali has increased, and then the fact is that Accor Hotels has operated twenty one hotels in Bali, which offering a total numbers of three thousand eight hundred forty seven rooms. In the meanwhile, Marriott International has fifteen hotels that offering three thousand a hundred and ten rooms, and another eleven hotel projects with a totals. Number of rooms two thousand two hundred seventy six rooms. While on the other hand, Archipelago International has a fifteen hotels, which managing the two thousand and sixty seven rooms. It is also very interesting that there will be the upcoming new four and five stars hotels in Bali, and the brands such as the Elements in Ubud, the Marriott Bali in Nusa Dua area, the Como Uma in Changu. Renaissance Bali in Uluwatu, as well as the Radisson Blu, another higher agency in Sanur, the Sangvila, and lastly the El Love brand in Sanur and Kuta. Now we are moving on to the part one point two, which is the problem statement. Looking into the increased number of international hotel change in Bali. Many companies hired expatriate general manager for the hotels, and the aims to hire the general manager are to maintain the international branding benefits, and also adopting the same standards for all over the world. The government also has stated that the Ministry of the Manpower, at the end of August, aims to simplify the process of the foreigners to get a working permit. There are approximately up to eight hotels for the managers, and perhaps more, as it is not including the hotels under the Hilton brands and also the Four Seasons. So this Tia Wati in two thousand and fifteen has pointed out what are the benefits to hire the expatriate general manager, and then she mentions that one of them is creating the international brand image, especially the prestige. Having advancement from their country so that it can be implemented in the company, having a strong ability to compete, and also they are more confident in the decision making. They have a more courage to receive a challenge, 
they are highly motivated to comply the standards and also they have independent spirits and the ability to be assigned anywhere within the same international hotel chain. So what is the issues? The issues is intercultural communication. Intercultural communication is defined as a process of sharing information with people belonging to a different cultures and the case to the expatriate general manager that can happen is first the expatriate general manager may only have a little knowledge of Bahasa Indonesia because they just recently placed within the country and then the second one they may not understand the language at all especially the local language we have the Balinese and there is also Indonesians and then the third one they may also facing some struggles with the cultural issues so what are the possibility of intercultural communication problems so it can be ethnocentrism it can also be the stereotypes it can also be the prejudice it can also be the language and then lastly it can also be the non-verbal communication now we move to the 1.3, the objective and the significance of the study. The objective of the study are firstly to study the deep understanding, the intercultural communications and also to identify the barriers. And then secondly, it's to identify the issues that our expatriate general managers may have, especially when they are adopting the new cultures and also to identify like how long the time taking from them to settle with the new cultures in the companies and then lastly it is to determine how the expatriate general manager perceive the intercultural communication struggles and also how it may impact into the performance within the hotel teams so the 1.4 is limitations of the study as we know that the general manager positions is the most important person in the hotel so the limitation for the study it can be a time constraints and also the access the general manager also have a strict and limit time during the working hours so how do we anticipate these limitations so the, to anticipate is it can be solved by increasing the network with hotel human resource manager who may help us to link the proposal for this study and in hoping to get the preferable response to have access to collect the information as well as to be able to conduct a semi-structured interview to them. The chapter 2, it is about the theoretical framework. So the 2.1 is the literature review. Effective communications is a primary function for all successful organizations, whether it's in initial startups, it's in, in the growing company, or it is in international companies. And communications is also the key component in any organizations as it is involved the process of informing, controlling, and also coordination during the business operation. So in the theory of communications, communication is defined as a process by which information is exchanged and delivered between individuals through the common system, which is called a symbol, a sign, and also the behavior. That could be including the both verbal and also non-verbal, and then in the same meaning as well as the direct and indirect form of communication. Given the increased number of international hotel chains in Bali, many companies hire the expatriate general manager for the hotel. As mentioned before, it is to maintain the international branding benefit and also adopting the new same standards for all over the world. So as a result for this, Expatriate hotels general manager is not a new phenomenon in Bali. So parallel to the recent research from Baba, Klusing, Rader, and Henderson, their study indicate that even though English is a shared language, it doesn't ensure 
there is an efficient communication in there. Even if the expatriates are able to speak in English with the local employees, the interpretations may be different and vary because it is depends on their cultural norms and also depends on the social linguistic orientations. So such differences in the meaning sometimes it remains unrecognized and can result in the misunderstanding and also error decision making. The primary focus of how intercultural may impact in communication between people who do not share the same culture background is often defined as a national culture or nation state and co-culture such as ethnicity and race. So what happens to the new hotel general manager who get the new appointed location in the country and then it taking time for them to learn the new culture as well as the employee. So they need the ability to adjust the work, they need the ability to adjust the social and then the general cultural dimensions of the new cultures because that's the first thing that they need to do in order to be productive in overseas assignment. So to be a successful expatriate manager, they also need to adjust the predict task completions and also the relationship to build the effectiveness during the overseas assignment. So the study from Dear Dove in 2006, there is the need for intercultural competence which is the ability to develop target, knowledge, skill, attitude, which lead into the feasible behavior and communications that are effective and also appropriate. So therefore, the hotel's general managers that is appointed in a new country is, before they are appointed, at least they must perform the intercultural competence attributes. So the attributes are the attitudes, knowledge, and skills. So the attitude, knowledge, and skills is the constituent elements for intercultural competence. So the knowledge such as the cultural self-understandings, the cultural specific knowledge, the social linguistic awareness, and also the global issues and trends. So the skill can be the listening, observing, the patience, the perseverance, the viewing the world from other perspective, and also they need the attitude to be respect with new cultures. They also need to be open, but they are also curious and also have a high discovery level. So in the communications between the expatriate general managers to the local employee, it may also involve the cross-cultural communication management in there because as mentioned by uh, Yusuf Zulkifli, Rashid and Kamil in 2014, the cross-cultural communication is a concept of how communicative activities of people coming from different culture backgrounds and the essence and the rules of communicative activities maybe happens. So the concept is looking into how people from different cultures and communicate between and how they exchange the information. So the cross-cultural communication is not only between a different countries but also can be between people from different nations, from the social status, from the communication style, behaviors, norms, expectation and also the life experience. But again for this study we will be more specific into how the cross-cultural communication can happen between people from different countries as we are analyzing how intercultural communication might happen between them. So the study of the cross-cultural management can be including the five factors such as the first one is the national culture, the second one is the high and low context uh, communications, the third one is the communication style, the fourth one is languages, and then the fifth one is the communication system. So between the five factors, in my opinion, the one that is more touching into the intercultural communication is the high versus low context cultural communication as well as the languages. So what is the high versus low context cultural communications? 
so the high context culture is where is the people coming from the specific country they are preferring the message information it need to contain less information while on the other hand the people with with the low context culture less information is contained in the settings and less information is shared between two people communicating so message need to be contain more information so that's the difference how people solving the conflicts so the Carden 2008 has classified the following cultures into the order of the lowest into the highest context of cultures such as Swiss Germans, Germans, Scandinavians, Northern Americans, French, English, Italians, Latin America, Arabs, Chinese, and Japanese. So again, the challenge in cross-cultural communications are manifold as the significant cultural differences between communicators would result in the miscommunications and we know that miscommunication in organization may lead into the conflicts and it's also affecting the company performance in organization and we are not hoping that happens the 2.2 is the conceptual framework so how the concept is come from is from increasing number of international hotel chains in bali as a result of the increasing number of the hotel chains in bali there is the need to hire the general managers to allocate within the country especially if it's international brand they will use the expatriate manager to be assigned in anywhere within the countries and when the general manager is hired there will be the local employees that they need to work with so this is where intercultural communication may happen between expatriate general managers and also the local employees so back again into definitions of intercultural communications communication is defined of exchanging the information so how exchanging the information can happen between the manager and the employees is like the situation in where they need to delegate the work in where they are doing the meetings and where they are doing the everyday communication in which communication that can be the verbal or non-verbal can be direct and also indirect communication so instead of intercultural communications there will be also the cross-culture management happens within the organization so when the expatriate general manager is allocated within the countries before they are allocated they need to have the intercultural competence right so um, this study is aiming to have a qualitative study that are using the constructive paradigm for having a deep understanding how intercultural communications can happen and what are the barriers and how they solve the issues and what are the issues in adopting the new culture and how long the time that they take in order to settle down and then what are the struggles and how the struggles is affecting the team performance so after getting the result of the interview then it will be analyzed into the discussion and we know whether actually the general manager is actually having the intercultural contents or not before they are getting assigned in the new country that's the general information of the chapter one and chapter two and i'm looking forward for your feedback so it could improve me and thank you so much for your attentions and i hope you all have a nice weekend and thank you again bye bye